my name is Angie. I'm the lead keeper here in Children's Zoo. Welcome to our Facebook Live, and we're hanging out here with our Black Welsh Mountain Sheep Flock. We're going to give them uh, some enrichment and see how they like playing with that. Their favorite snack is Timothy pellets, which is basically compressed Timothy hay, so they really enjoy those. And we have a flock here of seven ewes, which are female sheep. These guys range in age from about five years old to ten years old. And they're all female. These guys are considered what we call a heritage breed. So that means they are a breed that were used by our forefathers. And we like to focus on heritage breeds here. It helps preserve um, that old range of agriculture. These guys are considered threatened, according to the American Livestock Conservancy, which means there aren't that many left. So it's the same as looking at a wild animal. When you look at the capacity and the numbers that are out there, these guys are under the threatened status because their numbers are low. They were um, developed in Wales, hence Black Welsh Mountain Sheep. They were actually developed from the Welsh Mountain Sheep, which was a typically white breed of sheep. But they liked the black coloration so much, so they continuously bred um, black sheep that would pop up every once in a while within that population. And they developed their own breed from that. So these guys are the only fully black sheep in Britain. And they are used for both wool and meat in agriculture. So that's what's considered a dual purpose breed. They can be used for one or the other. Their wool is not as high quality as a strictly wool sheep, but it's higher quality than a sheep that's used mainly for meat. These guys, as I said, love Timothy pellets, and we do different training with them every day. When we first got this flock of girls, they were not used to direct human contact, and we did a lot of work socializing them and getting them um, good and comfortable with us. So they were used to people being around them, but no direct work. And now they will come up to us and voluntarily let us put halters on them and we can walk them around. And they're very comfortable with us coming in and hanging out with them. They all have different personalities. Some of them very much like getting attention from keepers. And some of them don't really want anything to do with you unless you have treats, as is the case with many animals. But it's been pretty fun watching their development as they kind of learn things. So these guys do have a very thick, fluffy wool coat. Sheep in captivity do need to be sheared at least once a year. Some breeds possibly even twice a year. And that just means to take all their wool off, giving them basically a nice haircut. That is because sheep have been developed for wool use. So their wool keeps growing. They don't shed it like a dog or cat sheds their hair. If you were to leave them alone, their wool coat would just get thicker and denser and it would not come off on its own. So they need for their health and safety to be sheared. We actually have a professional shearer come in once a year to do these guys. So they were done in early July. So this is the coat that they've grown on since then. So it's about five months worth of growth, um, but they will get very fluffy by next year. Yeah, so one of the things we like to do with pretty much all of our animals here at the zoo is something called enrichment. And enrichment's really just anything to break up their day, to help simulate natural behaviors, um, and get them doing different things. And there can be a wide variety of things that you do. Um, we can even do something as simple as putting something new that they haven't seen before in their area. We use with these guys a lot puzzle balls and puzzle feeders. So we'll use a ball like this and we'll put treats inside. So they have to bump it to make it roll and then the treats fall out. So that kind of gives them A, the um, foraging capacity of kind of finding the treats as they spill along, but gives them something to do and kind of break things up for them. We also use uh, PVC tubes in a similar manner where they have holes drilled into them and we can put treats inside. We also gave them bamboo today, which they really like to chew on the leaves. Um, we'll offer them different types of edible plants as browse. So these guys can get something that's kind of not in their normal diet. And these guys have free choice access to hay at all times. That's their primary diet. And we do use the Timothy pellets as uh, treats 
and they get a small portion allotted every day for that as well. So they'll kind of get a dinner of Timothy pellets and then basically the hay is 24 seven access. And of course they're able to eat grass out here in the field as well. Tabitha's over here kind of stealing all the crumbs. <laughs> Their favorite snack is definitely the Timothy pellets. Um, we offer them different types of produce as well, but they don't seem to be as interested in them as like our goats, for example. Um, but we've tried sweet potato, apple, pears, celery with them. Some of them will eat them and some of them won't. Some of them are interested at times, but not always interested. So it's a little bit variable, but we do like to give them different things just as choices. Um, kind of let them decide if they want to use them or not. In the summer, we'll freeze um, even just the Timothy pellets, celery, um, different types of hay or uh, the produce in water to make big popsicles for them as an option to cool them down as well. And because these guys get such big fluffy coats, before they get sheared, they do get quite hot easily. So we always have fans running for them. And sometimes we'll even set up a mister so they can kind of run under the water to cool them off. We do maintenance on them as well, like trimming their hooves. These guys here, we only trim their hooves about four times a year. They don't get too overgrown. They're pretty good at wearing them down on their own. But we kind of keep a close monitor on their bodies and kind of want to keep preventative care up as needed. One interesting thing about this breed of sheep is you'll notice they have long fluffy tails. So often when you see sheep, they have very short tails, but they're always born with long tails. However, typically sheep are, have their tails docked when they're very young. If you do it when a lamb is first born within a few days, um, it can be a relatively easy procedure, just if you've heard about puppies getting their tails docked. Um, it's done very commonly in sheep because they can get a disease called fly strike, which is when fecal matter builds up under the tails um, and then flies are attracted to it and can be really bad for young lambs. But the Welsh, Black Welsh Mountain Sheep, they actually have uh, no wool on the underside of their tails. So they don't have as many issues with fly strike as other breeds of sheep would. And it's in their breed standards to not dock their tails. So that's why they all have long fluffy tails. These guys were first recognized as a breed in around the 1920s and brought to North America around the 1970s. Because their numbers have become so low, it's kind of made them more of a niche breed to have here, but also more important to help preserve this breed and their heritage. They will, are born black and they will stay black throughout their lives. Their coats don't change color but they do get different white markings on their faces. All of our girls have slightly different facial markings. It's one of our good ways to tell them apart. This is Wasilla. And we do weigh these guys every month as well as part of our um, healthcare program so we can keep a close watch on their weight and their body condition. So once a month, these guys will get haltered and just walk onto a scale platform. Um, they're very comfortable with the procedure and it goes very quickly. Um, and then we also keep track of their body condition score as well, which is just a method of kind of keeping them on a scale um, to kind of determine if they're on an ideal body condition or if they're under or over conditioned. Yeah? You gonna come say hello? So we've got Teresa here, and then this is Tabitha. Tabitha is probably our friendliest sheep. She literally likes getting um, pets and scratches, so she'll come right up to people for that. Teresa is one of our shyest. It took about six months before we were even able to halter her, just with very slow conditioning. We want the experience to always be positive for the animals, and we let them choose to participate, so they always get the choice of whether they're gonna participate in training or not. Um, we don't want to force them to do anything they don't want to do. But 
Now, even Teresa, who, as I said, is one of our shyest, she will come right over for snacks. She'll let us put a halter on her without any problems, and she does really great. Huh. Gonna enjoy getting their snacks. Hi, Dammy. Good girl. All right, thanks everyone for coming out. And feel free to let us know if you have any more questions.